Welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs, boys. On today's episode, we're going to go through some fundamental networking concepts, right? Uh, we kind of need to understand this to get what we're going to go through in the next couple of videos. So I figured I'd start with this, you know, put these out, and then we're going to start with the VM videos so you can kind of follow along and learn to my T. So uh, it's been a while since I studied for my CCNA. But I do still have some fundamental networking knowledge, and this is some knowledge I feel like you should have, right? Um, so what is a switch? I'm not talking about your Nintendo Switch. Uh, I'm talking about a network switch, basically a device that you connect your computers to to allow them to talk to each other. You could consider the switch like the hallways or the roads of your network, right? It's what lets devices on your local network or like inside of your building talk to each other. All right, we are back. Let's say we have three computers in the network and we want them to talk to each other, right? The simplest solution we come up with is that we just connect these to each other directly. So we could do connect this one to this one, right? The problem is if we didn't want to connect this one to this one, we don't have enough ports, right? Or if we want to connect this one to this one, we don't have enough ports. Right. Of course, we could buy more ports, you know, like a USB Ethernet port, or we could also purchase, uh, you know, like a PCIe port adapter. But why do that? Because we'd have to buy more ports for each one of these computers. Right. When we could simply is connect these ports like this. Right. Remember, a switch lets you connect multiple computers together. Each one of those ports on the switch is another computer that you can connect to. Right, so a four port switch will let up to four computers talk to each other. A 16 port switch will let 16 computers talk to each other, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to, I think, 64 port switches, right? And the cool thing is, not only can switches talk to each other, switches can also talk to other switches. So let's say I ran out of ports on my switch. What I could then do is add another switch, like so, connect them to each other, like so right and then every computer I add after this so let's say I add a fourth computer right here right this fourth computer when I connect it to this switch right and let's power this on so this fourth computer will connect it to this switch. So now that I've connected PC4 to switch 2, right, I can actually talk to PC1, 2, and 3 as if they were connected, right? Because two switches connected to each other. Remember, this is like a road. So if I wanted to talk to PC2, the path would go like this to switch 2, to switch 1, to PC2, and vice versa. So before we continue our Proxmox videos, we have to get to another fundamental concept, virtual switches, right? So what is a virtual switch? Remember in the last video, a switch allows you to connect multiple computers together, right? Well, virtual switch lets you do basically the same thing. It allows you to connect multiple virtual machines together. The difference here being that the switch is virtualized. It actually provides the switching functionality on the host itself and then the host is connected to other switches and that's what lets the virtual machines talk to the network so what are virtual switches good for well virtual switches are a good way to separate your host and management traffic right you know when you're working with virtual machines you don't want the computer that's running the virtual machines to actually be able to talk to the virtual machines and vice versa as a general rule, right? Um, it's also good to separate virtual machine traffic. So let's say you have one machine and you don't want it to talk to another machine. Um, you can go ahead and create two switches and then separate that traffic out between those two virtual switches and they won't know that each other exists. So that's a very useful feature, right? In the last video, we went over virtual switches and what they can be used for. Let's walk through a practical example of that and see how that would, you know, actually work or apply within the network. So I have a little lab network right here. 
right? Off screen, you know, it has a router, a domain controller, all the good stuff that makes Lab Networks fun. We have two hosts, a Linux host and a Windows host. So in order to configure this host virtual switches, you first click on the host itself. You then click on network. You then click on the virtual bridge. There's virtual bridge zero and then there's ENS18. So ENS18 is the actual physical interface and then virtual bridge zero is the virtual switch, right? And when you click on the virtual switch, you'll see this menu right here, right? And you'll see that it lists bridge ports. So bridge ports or the ports or the actual physical interfaces that the virtual bridge connects to, right? So because we define bridge port ENS18, right, the actual physical interface of this host is now signed to virtual bridge zero. So we go over to the right and we go back to our Proxmox host and we were to click another host like PV lab two and we click that host and then we go ahead and we click network and we go to the right again, you'll see this host is also configured the same way. It has a virtual bridge zero and an ENS 18, right? So with the Proxmox hosts, they all have to have the same virtual bridge names. So as a general rule, you'll want to have your Proxmox hosts to have the same bridges, especially if you want to use some of the more advanced features. That's not necessarily something you have to do, but it is a suggestion. So after we do the configuration changes we made in Proxmox, we should end up something like this where we have two VMs connected to one virtual switch, right? That virtual switch is assigned to that Proxmox interface and it's connected to the network. After we're done making the configuration changes we're about to make, we'll then end up with a network that looks like this, where each VM has its own vSwitch and they're effectively blind and don't know how to talk to each other. So we have two virtual machines here. We have a Linux host and a Windows host. Let's go ahead and let's get them started. And our virtual machines are spun up. So here's the next thing that we go ahead and we do. We then log back into our Proxmox host. We don't know the Linux host IP, so let's see if we can find that out real quick. Real quick IP address. Cool. And our IP is 10.0.0.105. And of course, on our Windows host, our IP is 10.0.0.104. And what we can do is have it continuously ping. Well, this VM can talk to this VM, right? So what they're then going to do is we're going to change our virtual bridge settings to stop them from talking to each other. So we click our Proxmox host. We then click Network. And then we create a new virtual bridge. Something to keep in mind when creating the virtual bridge is that you don't necessarily need to assign it an interface, right? You can have virtual bridges that aren't assigned to anything to kind of basically create like a private network. Okay. So you can create a virtual bridge that's not attached to anything to kind of create like a private network, but anything on this virtual bridge, unless you know, you properly configure it, won't be able to access anything else. So after that change, we now have two bridges. We're not quite all the way there yet. We now have to move one of the VMs to a different bridge. So we're about to do that. So we're back on the Windows host again, right? After we created that virtual bridge and I'll go to the right side a little bit so you can see its configuration settings and you see it's still pinging. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is change the bridge. So I go to hardware, I then go to network devices, I click edit and you'll see in network devices, we now have a new bridge, virtual bridge one. I click OK. I wait for it to change. And then when we go back to this host, um, it should lose network connectivity. Let's see what's going on. There we go. It just took a couple seconds. So basically what we just did was we took that network traffic and we turned it from this to this. Right, they're basically two completely separate networks now, or plugged into two completely separate networks now. Right, very useful, very powerful feature.